figure out what the color is. So John, what we're gonna do, just give me yes. a moment. Let's uh, just uh, check with our friends here. Good morning, everyone. Just to ensure that you will hear the conversation all throughout, select, kindly select in the, in the interpretation channel, kindly select English. Thank you. Okay, John, go ahead. So if we get over to the Daniel Smith real quick and join there. Okay. Excuse me, just a second, just trying to Okay, so I think we'll play a kind of a guessing game today. Uh, for those of you that have been with me for quite some time, you're um, gonna know either the uh, C-Lab or you're gonna know the um, characteristics of a paint. So we'll see if you can guess what these are. I'm gonna show them to you and then um, and you can guess. For those of you on Zoom, you can actually talk to me if you wish. So these are okay. So these are going to be the characteristics of the colors I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to read out whether what the light fastness is. I'm going to read out what the staining is, the granulation, and I will tell you what the color index name is. I.e., I. what is the pigment? And we'll see if you can guess what the color is. I'm going to show you the color too. So you won't have to guess from here if it's a yellow or a blue. I'm going to show you what the color is. And we'll see if you can guess what it is. Okay. All right. Good morning, Anika. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Gabriel. Good morning, Patty. It's a fun test, Patty. So Patty says this is a test. It's a test that you can't fail. How's that? Kind of like the best tests. And it's open book. And if you're on Zoom, it's open mic. If you want to really know the answer, I'll tell you what the answer is. It's just meant to be fun. I think learning can be a lot of fun. So most of you are gonna know how to look these up really quick. Depending on your eye, you may just know right off the bat what the color is. Okay. So let's start. So this one this one Um, okay. No. This camera has a mind. <laughs> it has a it has a mind of its own. Let's do that. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. no. <laughs> Looks like cobalt teal. Cobalt teal blue. <laughs> okay, it's not cobalt teal blue. So this one has an excellent light fast. It's non-staining. It is non-granulating, no. 
And I'll put another color down that'll also autofocus. So it's non-granulating, it's transparent. It's a 77 on the light scale and it's warm. Now I'll also tell you it's a Primatec. It's a Primatec. King Man Green Turquoise. It's Amazonite. No. Oh. <laughs> so Patty said Sleeping Beauty. Patty, that's a good guess. Uh, I think when I put another color, I'm going to try to autofocus again. So let's, let's try another one. It's a fun game. I'm only going to do like 10, and then we'll do something else. My screen is very, very light. <laughs> Do we get to win the color if we guess it? <laughs> there you go. If you, if you were right beside me, I'd gladly give it to you. But you will have my admiration. Uh. <laughs> so this one, it's a very pretty color. It comes from um, super fun sites, sites, sites that have been polluted. There's companies that go in. They purify the pigment. This is um, very pure iron oxide, very pure. And the characteristics of this, it's um, excellent light fastness. It is also non-staining. It's granulating as you can see, and it's semi-transparent. Mommy box it. And it's a 56 on the light scale. Oh, red iron oxide, Reba, you are so, I'm gonna, Reba, I'm gonna give that to you because that's really super close. And Patty says, Lunar Earth. This is actually environmental friendly yellow iron oxide. So there you go. So Patty also said lunar earth, lunar earth, because it's also uh, an oxide. I could see that. Uh, so here we'll do another one. I think many of you are just gonna get this just because how it looks. Okay, so this particular color. Hello, Claudia, hello, Reba. Uh, this color is excellent in light fastness. It is going to be low staining, granulating as you see, and semi-transparent. It is also, let's see, ah, Linda got it. Green Appetite, that's correct. Green Appetite. Very good. Okay, so this one, So let me tell you about this one. This one is excellent, excellent light fastness, non-staining. It is going to be 2 an extent granulating and transparent. So Reba has no clue. So let me tell you some things about it. This one, <clears throat> It's a little bit difficult to see over the white, but if I take it, and I put it over the black, so what's that kind of telling you? It has lots of mica. Luminescent. And it is going to refract.
So this one is going to be actually reflective. So this is iridescent blue. Very close, Robert said that it's iridescent silver. So very good, very close. Yep. So um, someone said, Clarissa said interference. So if it was interference, a good way to tell the interference, at least most of them, because interference is refractive, I would actually see very white here. This would be really white if it was an interference. And iridescent, you do get to see some of the color because it's refract, it's re reflective. Okay, very nice. Okay. So this one. So this color is excellent light fastness. It's non-staining. It has granulation. It's semi-transparent. And the pigment is pigment brown number seven. The donut. Which, who said that? Hematite scarlet. Hematite scarlet, that's a good guess. Um, it is burnt sienna. So Reva, that's correct. It's burnt sienna. It's burnt sienna. It's Italian burnt sienna. So it's a um, it's a it's a natural sienna. Good at this. I mean, I saw the names, and when I do it, it's it's, it's tough. So very nice. Now this one. These are certainly some colors that that some of you would be using. So this is a this is a synthetic. It's a red iron oxide, but it's a synthetic. It's pigment red number one hundred one. It's excellent in light fastness. It's non staining. It is granulating and it's semi transparent. So Chantel, this is right here Italian Venetian red. Chantel says Venetian. It's Italian Venetian red. Now this one is made up of two pigments. The next one I'm going to show you is made up of ultramarine and burnt sienna. It's going to have excellent light fastness, low staining, it does granulate, and it's semi-transparent. And it has the name of an artist that is out of Australia. John, I have a question. Yes. Are yes. these coming from tube paints or cake? These, these particular ones right now are coming from the tube. But I also have five I'm going to show you that are different colors coming from um, sticks. And I was just wondering. Uh, because they're so uh, light, um, meaning more water, it seems like, than pigment. Um, I'm putting a lot, I'm putting more water than I normally do. Yeah. Tricky, yeah. tricky. Uh, I'm not trying to trick you. It's consistency. So... Now, some of these are, you know, I wouldn't say they're going to be the real vibrant. I mean, there's some that are super vibrant, like the pyrroles, the perilines. Um, so this right here has an artist's Joseph, name. Joseph's Goodwin. 
One more time. Josephs. Josephs. Okay, that's a that's a, that's a good. So. Um, First and blue. So there's Joseph being named. There's Alvaro, Alvaro Caliente, Indigo, and Clarissa said James Gray. And this is James Gray. Now, if I put Alvaro's close to this, one of his, it'd be very close. It'd be very close. So, you guys are good. Getting every one. Did you say James Gray? James, J A E S. James Gray. Yeah. Okay. Jane Blondell from Australia. Okay. Using <laughs> Quinn. That green is pretty. Yeah, the green is really pretty. Green appetite's a beautiful, it's a one's a beautiful mineral. It's kind of close to sap green, but Are we failing, John? I'm sorry? Are we failing? No, you're doing great. Uh, between <laughs> your answers and the answers on the other side, which is uh, Facebook, you're getting every single one. So great job. So, okay, this is going to be yellow. And we'll do these five. I did a real good job getting all over my hands. Okay, so this is a synthetic yellow iron oxide. It's going to be a synthetic yellow iron oxide. It's pigment yellow number 42. It's excellent light fastness. It's non-staining, it is granulating, and it's semi-transparent. We win three die cards. No. Semi transparent. So um, some of the answers are. Yeah. Two of them are Queen Gold, Aussie Red Gold, looks like Mars Yellow. This is Mars Yellow. So that's yeah. Diana Mars Yellow, Clarissa Mars Yellow. Um, it's Mars Yellow. Might have been some other ones that actually um, I scrolled by, but that's, that's Mars Yellow. You guys are good. Yeah, very good. Okay, this is a clay. This this particular this particular color um, is an organic an inorganic pigment infused into clay. Let's show you what it looks like. 
me scoot this over this way. There we go. Maya dark blue, Maya yellow. The garbage guy's making too much noise. I know how that goes. So this is um, an inorganic and organic pigment infused into clay. With the Mayan dark, you're right on the you're on the right path. This is Mayan orange. So so Mayan orange. I love having that one on my palette. The mine orange? Uh -huh. What do you use it for? Oh, if I want to get someone to look in a, an area of my painting, uh, really uh, warm things up. I usually put it on the t-shirts of my like people walking in my paintings. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I don't see the pigment index numbers on on Mayan orange. I don't see it here. And it's not on the, the color sheet that I see. Can, do you know what the pigment index numbers are? So I will get those. I'll get that for you. So this right here, I will get that for you. This one right here is two pigments. It is PB27 and PY97. So it's Prussian blue and arolide yellow. Um, medium staining, medium staining, granulating, semi-transparent. Sodalite genuine. Prussian green. Prussian green. Oh, let me put this over so I better see it. Prussian green. This one's interesting. I'm asked quite a bit about this one. It's it's uh when I when you look at the mineral, you actually see a lot of the beautiful particles on the mineral itself. They're up on top of the mineral. Um, so it's a, it's going to be a genuine. It's low staining. It is granulating, and it's semi-transparent. So it's going to be a Primatech. Color should give it away. So it's a Primatech. You want a genuine? That's a very, very, very good guess. It's not. It's um, so Barbara says it's perprite. It's perprite. Perprite. Sometimes with what you see with your monitor, I probably would have also said either perprite or amethyst because of how the monitors. But this one happens to be perprite. And fluorescence is perfect. Yeah, perfect. So this particular one, this is also going to be a genuine. 
excellent light fastness, low staining, non-granulating, and transparent. It is one of the most expensive pigments. It's a semi-precious stone. It's made into jewelry quite a bit. It's, it's very beautiful. Lapis lazuli. The most expensive one. Yes, lapis is very expensive. Oh, no, it's not lapis lazuli. So I get another color on there, it just wants to. So it's a Primatech. So Anna Marie says rhodonite. It's rhodonite. Yeah, that's what. Right. Yeah. Is it? So if you thought rhodonite, Carolyn says Carolyn Devil says it's rhodonite. It's rhodonite. Very good. Okay. This one's quite a popular color. This one is ultramarine, quinacridone gold, and nickel azo yellow. It's excellent light fastness. It's medium staining. It is granulating, and it's semi-transparent. Undersea green. Yes. Whoever said that is right. It's undersea green. It's it's really my most favorite. Is it really? Well, with serpentine. What do you use it for? Landscapes. Anything that's got plant matter and it. it's just it's a stunning color. It is a pretty. It's color. a good, very good dark. You guys are good. Carolyn says it's one of her favorites too. She said undersea green, Clarissa undersea green, Carolyn undersea green, oh, Clarissa sap green. Very close. I mean, I probably would have said sap green too. So it's really good that you have eyes that you said undersea. Um, okay. I always think that's kind of fun. And then what I kind of do for myself when, when I play with it is I just really quickly do my little um, chart. I know I have my, my green, my red, my yellow, my blue. And I know from a light standard, if I say 50s, it's kind of where gray stands. I can then compare where my colors are to that right here in this first column. I'm getting that off my C-Lab C -Lab spreadsheet that's online. And then it really tells me whether it's cool, coolest, whether it's cool, this is 77, so it's a bright color, this being um, the Italian Venetian red. So the Italian Venetian red is gonna be 77, so that's, that's a high, high brightness to it relative. And it's also in the warmest, so it would be a, it live up in this quadrant right here. So pretty easy once you, you know, if you know what the, the, the A and the B are really easy to plot in your head over a cup of coffee. You can do just so much of this information. And because many of you have painted over and over, you already know what granulating versus non-granulating, um, you can see those, those factors as colors in your head over a cup of coffee as to what you want to use. I just kind of find it powerful. The more you're able to know about what you're, you're using, the more power you have. So Claudia says, undersea green, any red gives gorgeous granulating browns. Yep. Okay, so let's try that. This is gonna be permanent red, permanent red. And we have the undersea green out.
Zero red. Yeah. Yeah, very nice, Claudia. Wow. Yeah. So Claudia says, I never see green. Any red gives you gorgeous granulated browns. Very nice. Use more word to get the granulation. So it's kind of interesting. Um, you can use more water to get granulation and you can actually, for like example, um, ultramarine. You can get ultramarine to really granulate. If you add too much water, it'll really granulate. I would ask that question a lot. Why does the ultramarine, ultramarine, ultramarine blue granulate so much? And it's just how much water. And that's kind of the beauty of it about. Kind of the beauty about the water, watercolors. There we go. So oh, that's nice. permanent red. Yes, permanent red, and then the undersea green. Oh, mixed with it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. Barbara, do you have any examples of your paintings behind you? Um, no, I don't. That's not, I didn't do that one. Um, let me see if I can get one real fast. I think next we'll look at some sticks, not the same kind of, of game, just kind of look at the sticks. Um, Giovanni's online right now. Giovanni uses the sticks and uh, if you have any questions about them, you can answer questions that you might have. Let me show you that. There's an undersea green stick. <laughs> <laughs> I brought the ultramarine blue, the titanium white, the phthalo green. This is blue shade. This is the um, cornacridone coral. It's kind of a bright color, and then burnt umber. So we'll play with those for a second. I have a picture. Okay, please. Can you see it? Can now. Oh, that's awesome. There's a lot of undersea green in here, and then the water is Mayan blue. And I use a lot of tiger's eye, genuine. And, you know, the other greens that I love, which are the... Um, Serpentine and the uh, green appetite, and oh, zoisite. I love zoisite. So, so do you like the you like seem to like the granulating colors a lot? I do, and I like to use rough paper and and um, trying to go bigger. I have a very big brush. <laughs> oh, very cool. So, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you for asking. So this is kind of one of my, this is a color I like a lot. It's the uh, ultramarine blue. And people use it in different ways. Um, you can use shavings if you want. They're easy to travel with. You do what Giovanni does and he makes these beautiful little um, thin, thin lines. So. Perfect control, John. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what are those sticks you're painting it with? Um, these are the the watercolor sticks. This is um, just pure pigment, 
encased in gum Arabic. Okay, Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. I, I didn't even know you had them. How long you been having them? Oh, quite some time. Uh, 10, 10 years, 12 years. Oh, wow. And this is the titanium white. So let's do this. Titanium white is, titanium white is rutile. So it is actually a, a mineral. And then you use titanium white or Chinese white, I'm sure many of you have, um, to make your, to make your, uh, your paint more opaque. So it kind of be, kind of be gouache like. So touching the white. These are the phthalos. Thalos just they are just unbelievable. They're kind of the life of the party. The sticks are loaded with pigment. Again, you don't have to do from the end of your brush. You can draw with them. Um, so you can take any, Giovanni was showing this, you can take off any amount you want, um, whether it is, So from, from light to dark, I mean, you kind of in control of what you want to do with that. Do the sticks come in um, sets? They don't. We we left the sticks as open stocks. As, as That's just because as artists, um, I think you really want to pick your own. Mm -hmm. um, except for Gio, Gio, Giovanni to pick his own set, uh, which is a really good set. Um, but other, for, other than Giovanni's set, uh, they're all open stock. Mm -hmm. So these actually cost less than a series one watercolor tube, and yet they're series one, two, three, and four in the mm -hmm. sticks. So from a price standpoint, they're kind of I made them, but they're pretty much unbelievable when it comes to that. That's quinacridone. This is the uh, quinacridone coral. Six with rigor. Oh, that's with a rigor. It's a pure pigment. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Triple zero rigor, Giovanni. Zero, zero. <laughs> my my maximum size is uh, six zero. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful tool to fix. Very versatile. Hello, Stella. Thanks for joining us today. It's a beauty. Hi, guys. Hello. So this is the burnt umber. Again, you're kind of in control of what you want to do with that. Um, Chantel says, I used titanium for the cooler colors and Chinese for the warmer colors. They're, they're really super close to each other. And, and the Chinese seems to be um, on the uh, sea lab on the little warmer side. So it's kind of your choice. But yes, in general, the titanium is the, for the cooler. And the Chinese seems to be for the warmer. Um, let's see. 
do the sticks have the aqua soil binder? So the sticks are the sticks are the same exact formulation as the tubes. There's just way more pigment in the sticks. It's the only way to hold them together. Um, but the binder is the gum arabic. Same as same as the tubes. Same as the pan. They're all the same binder. They're all the same pigment. The variation is the amount of water. So that's kind of an example of the sticks. What's that color? This one right here. This um. This one right here. No. Uh, next to the red. Yeah. Keep going. That one. Yeah. What's that? That this one right what? here is the phthalo green, and this happens to be the blue shade. Okay, so you got to ask for the blue shade. Yeah, because there's blue shade, there's red shade, there's different okay. shades in the phthalos. Absolutely. You know, another way to, 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 to play with the colors is, is the um, 238 dot card, because there's enough paint with the dot that you can actually really see what it looks like. Um, which is, and it doesn't matter whether it's a stick or a pan, it's all going to look the same uh, because it's all the same pigment. Right. So Julia says, if you haven't tried the sticks, I highly recommend them. They're delightful. Thank you, Julia. I actually have some sticks from another company and they, you know, I'm just, figuring out how to use them really, you know, but um, they're, they are, they come in handy for certain things. Awesome. Okay, so here's, this is one that some of you mentioned. This is going to be Soda Light. And I'll show you Barbara uses bronzite, so from bronzite. Bronzite has mica inside of it, so it does sparkle. I'm going to do this one last. And So Michelle says the dot card I got last year is like my Bible. I don't, I also use it to keep track of all the colors I have. That's that's pretty cool. You know, I agree on the dots. I I, I they kept me going through the, the pandemic. <laughs> you know, what I owned and everything like that. It was just very, very helpful. And I just actually recently got the confetti dots. So my, that's my new toy. Oh, awesome. I think there's so many colors that when, you, when you're going out to the periphery of colors, it's neat to actually be able to see it. And I think what, I think what many people don't always understand is artists also want to feel it. And with watercolor, you can actually feel the different pigment. I mean, they, they truly, while they're all small, you can actually feel the difference of how they behave within the gum Arabic as the binder. It's kind of interesting. I think it's interesting. Okay, so this right here is going to be sodalite. So it's soda light. And you see, I can see it in front of me, and you're going to see it through the screen. It granulates very quickly. So it's a, it's a granulating color. Blue appetite. Yeah, blue appetite is, so this one is going to be, this is the soda light, and then there is the blue appetite as well. This is going to be, uh, I'm going to do this one, but this is going to be bronzite. I kind of, 
put the bronzites and the duochromes last when I play with them. It's going to put uh, mica inside of my water. You know, and people always, well, you know, John, I tried to color it and it had a sparkle. And that's usually because there was a duochrome or a luminescent or something with mica in the water. So when I used, uh, Barbara, when you do yours, because I know you said you use tiger's eye and you might be using bronzite. Do you use a separate, yeah. do you use separate water when you do that? No, I don't. You just work with it? I work with it and I just actually ordered the, I think the burnt bronzite, but um, I think shudulite, I think that's how you say it, right? Yeah, also so has some mica in it. And, um, but the bronzite is a really cool color. It's a very cool color, um, not cool, like it's cool because it's cool, cool, not a cold color. <laughs> awesome. So I, I've used it for sand in, in ocean pictures, which I find very hard to make, do, but um, anyway. Great, thank you. So this is the, the, the bronzite, toss that. This one, this one's a, this one's a beautiful mineral. So it's a neat color. This is going to be a Primatech. This is um, Hematite Genuine. So this is Hematite Genuine. You can see it just, it just blends really, really quickly. So I get the second color down that'll quit doing that. But Another there. winner. I love that one. Yeah, it's a really pretty color. Are you going to show the purple purple one? Um, I, I have that. Let me get that. Okay. That's another favorite. That reminds me of titanium gray. Does it? Minus the opaque. So so what I do have is the <coughs> okay. It's let me put another color down. I have two colors. It's it's because it's trying to balance the white against this one. So let me put one more color down. Um, this is going to be imperial purple. It's just as if and now it should start to focus. And with the third color, get rid of the white, it'll, it'll focus much better. So it's gonna be hematite burnt scarlet. I'm gonna try that without showing that one. Hematite burnt scarlet. Brought two hematites today. I like the brown, it's the kind of yellowish brown that you see in the hematite. So, hematite genuine, and this is the um, hematite burnt scarlet. So this one, this is sujolite. And a couple of you talked about sujolite and sujolite absolutely 
as mica. So that is sutilite. Just to show you this. Bruce, my mineralogist, came back, just came back not too long ago from website and from Tucson. And this is right here. This is jewelry grade sugilite. I collect minerals, so every time I, I Bruce goes, I have to bring back minerals. So that's those are jewelry grade. And this is, if I broke this open, you'd see it's, it's going to be very close. So you can see where this were to knock off, but you can see how close the form that we use is to the jewelry grade. I mean, they're, they're just so close to each other. Um, this would make it almost prohibitive to make. This isn't much better because this is pretty expensive. Um, but these are probably $400 a piece, these little tiny pieces. Um, so we buy these in just huge quantities that they can't use this. Um, they're making product uh, um, either for commercial industry and the pieces that break off they can't use, we keep. So it's kind of neat. We were able to use all the scraps. So this one right here is going to be a duochrome. This is duochrome, duochrome aquamarine. So duochrome luminescent, duochromes both refract and reflect light because they have mica at different levels. So that's what it looks like over black. Which one is that, Gabriel? So that's over black. And Hermitite genuine. Hermitite genuine. And there it is over white. So it really punches, and as it, as it dries, we'll see that even more. Do the Primitate pieces dry well in pans? I need to try them. I usually prefer working from pans. Yes, they'll work um, just as well in pans. If you've watched um, Lauren McCracken, sometimes on uh, pigments that not so much the not so much the primatex except anything with mica. Mica tends to be like um, shingles on your house. They can pack kind of tight. So if you squirt them, if you squirt them with water, like some warm squirt your pans with warm water or water, and give it ten or fifteen seconds, it'll loosen them up. But yes, they'll they'll. Um, we actually sell pan sets that have the Primatex in them. So absolutely. Gum Arabic, the neat thing about gum Arabic, is it's going to always re-wet. Um, it's kind of, it's really kind of at, at your beck and call, um, how much water you want to add to it. Kind of neat, puts you in, total control, but you can re-wet it. I'll show you in a second. I have some that I leave in my window over here. So I'll this out and I'll show you. That's a good question.
Yes. This is a duochrome, and it's duochrome aquamarine. Duochrome aquamarine. You're very welcome. So this particular color has been on my window. I'll put these in there real quick so you see. There we go. So this is when we were first learning how to do pans. And they weren't, they weren't perfect. They weren't up to my standard. So I pulled all these out myself. And they've been on my window probably for three years right here in my office. So I will show you what that looks like. So. So here's three years. And come out of it, well, re wet. It's kind of the nature of gum Arabic. Okay. So the same thing would apply if it was a Primatech. It's not going to matter. The gum Arabic is going to go into solution. And again, how much solution goes into is up to you. You know, it's how much, it's how much water you want to add to it. Um, so you get to con you get to control that. I put a lot of water right there, but that'd be up to you. So I hope that answers that question. Are you using warm water now with that? I'm not. No, I just pulled them off my shelf with there. So I'm just using uh, right out of the tap. So it's not super cold. But my beautiful blue container is just right out of the tap. So it will loosen up even more with the warmer water. It would. It's going to be a cad. Oh, you're guessing on those too. <laughs> That's great. So the CAD is a CAD U, H U E, which means it's not a CAD. And these are just super, super vibrant. Really, really vibrant. I moved away from CADs quite a long time ago. I think the uh, I think the writing is on the wall for cadmiums. And so we haven't had them for quite some time. This one is PV19. This is Quinn Rose. I'm going to put it right over this. This is Quinn Rose. So PV, pigment violet, uh, Quinn rose, Quinn red, and Quinn violet, all the same, all the same pigment, just different places where the alpha and beta particles go on the five member ring. I believe what I put, I believe it's Mars yellow. It's either Mars yellow or it's a, a yellow sienna. It's one of the two. And this one is a pretty interesting color. 
this along with ultramarine blue and viridian make up moon glow. So this is one of the three colors that goes into moon glow, which probably most of you have. And gives moon glow its reddish tint versus shadow violet. It uses pyro orange, which gives pyro orange, which also uses ultramarine, blue, and viridian, its orange tint. So this is anthraquinoid red. Anthraquinoid red. Oh, yeah. So Melby says anth red. Absolutely. That's correct. All right. So with that, Barbara, thank you for going live with me. Gabriel, thank you for going live with me. And some of you, I heard your voices. Thank you for, for being part. Um, Chantel, Patty, Reba, Clarissa, all of you. Thank you for being um, with me today. Um, it's a uh, it makes this time really wonderful. So thank you, I appreciate it greatly. Tomorrow, um, Anders Anderson will be with me tomorrow. Um, Anders is an awesome um, watercolorist. He's one of our brand ambassadors. He usually um, is with us in Germany. He's been with us in Germany probably for the last six years. Um, people walking the show floor love to see what he's doing. He's one of the few artists I know, although some of you may do this as well. He paints with his paper at 90 degree angle. Um, I think uh, Giovanni does it, um, Alvaro does it. And then he creates a water line to catch the drippings and then he makes forests out of it. So I think you'll have a lot of fun with him. He's, he's really just a wonderful guy. Um, with that, thank you for joining me. It's wonderful, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you all, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye-bye, see, you, you. see you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome.